Remember this. Anything else over here? Yeah. Remember this. Anybody else? Prayer request over here. Prayer request. Remember this. Remember the lost. Anybody else? Prayer request. Pray for this. Anybody else? Prayer request. Just remember our nation, our elections coming up here in this county. The Lord of God said to pray for them that's in, in uh, authority over us that we live in peace. I want to live in peace. I don't know about you. I want to live in peace. So let's pray for our leaders, pray for our country, pray for the elections. A lot of stuff going on in our local government. Let's pray for that. Let's back them up. Yeah. Let's pray for revival. Will you? Will you pray for revival? Ask God to send a supernatural wave of his glory touch people's hearts turn them back to god amen that's what i want to say and i, I don't it don't have to be here i just want to be a part of it it'd be all if i'd done it over at clayton church of god it'd be all if i'd done it up at hard that'd be all right just long as long as he does it i just want to see a move of god i want to see people's heart turn back to him i believe there's going to be an, a, a, a final push for the church I, if i can call it that i don't know if that's the right terminology but i believe god's going to do something right before this thing is over i i, I believe that with all of my heart and in some ways, you look at it as bad as it looks out there and as bad as we've seen it get. And the only way I can compare that is what I've seen prior to in my life. But I've seen the progression of the thing, how it's gotten worse. You'd almost have to say that God is going to have to do something if we're going to make it in some ways to get people's attention, turn them back to him. I wonder if he's been trying to do that through some of the shaking that we've seen. Yeah. It's a good question, ain't it? I just want to know I'm right with him, don't you? Right. I just know if my heart's right with him, everything's going to be all right. And I know whatever God does, it'll be right, won't it? Right. It'll be just, and it'll be right. Yeah. yeah, and then when a man dies, he'll be in the hands of a just God, won't he? Yes. Yeah, ain't you glad he's a good God? Yes. Amen. Amen. Anything else before we pray? Let's pray, will you? Yes. Father, in Jesus' name, God, we come to you tonight as humble, God, as we know how. Father, you've heard the request in this house. We've come together, God, to honor you and to glorify your name. And, Father, we're coming, God, and humbling ourselves before you, looking to the mountain would come with our help, and we're asking you, God, to help us, Lord. I'm praying today, God, in this church, God, as we come together in one mind and one accord. And, Father, we're asking you in the name of Jesus, Father, that you would send a wave of your glory, God. I pray that you'll move in a mighty way and draw me into you, Father, in this county, God. I pray that revival break out in the homes, God, in the middle of the night, God, in the living rooms, Father, in the bedrooms, God. I pray the Holy Ghost of God would move in a mighty way, Father, throughout. I pray for the elections coming up, God. We ask you, God, to have your way, Father. I pray for every one of them in the name of Jesus, all of our county, Father, all of our city, and all of the nation, God, the elections coming up, Father. I pray that you'd have your way on that Supreme Court, God. I pray that you'd fill it, God, according to your liking and nobody else's, Father. I'm asking you, God, to have your way, Father. Father, we're praying and we're asking you, God, for this great nation, God. We don't want to give up on America, God, but, Lord, I know time's coming to an end, God, and it's drawing now, but God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you'll touch this great land one more time, that Jesus Christ be famous throughout this land one more time, God. Father, we need you tonight, God. We're giving you the praise, giving you the glory, and giving you the honor, God. We love you, Father, and we magnify your holy name, God. We worship you tonight, God. I pray you'll touch us, God. Let us worship you in freedom, God, that it be in spirit and in truth, God, set free from our own selves, God, that we turn loose in you, Father. Father, and let Jesus have his way in our heart, have his way in our lives, have his way in the message tonight. I pray, God, you touch us, God. I pray that Jesus be glorified in this pulpit tonight, God. And I pray everything be done in decent and in order, God, be according to your will. Not an old man, God, I pray in the name of Jesus. God, we're needing help, Father, and we're coming to you, Father, and we're asking you for help this night. I ask you to be with your church, God, the sister churches, God, the ones all around us. I pray you'll touch them, Father. I pray you'll strengthen them, God, to help them stand, Father, in this time that we're in. God, help us in the name of Jesus. Stand for the truth, God. We ask you, Father, in Jesus' name, that you be glorified in everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you will, come help us sing. We're going to try to do a few. Come on up.
up here, fellas. Come on, Howard, help us. Get the, let's get the dust knocked off these hymnals. Jerry, get up here. Come on, Jerry. Let's try 199. We haven't done any singing here since we opened back up. This will be the first time. Amen. We may be a little rusty, but praise God, we're going to glorify God. Hey, we're only going to sing for one reason, that's for Jesus. And that's the only reason we're singing.
177. Are you ready for the word of God? Amen. 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 Brother Johnny, I come hungry tonight. Yeah. Amen. I want to hear from heaven. Will you pray while he comes? Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, Lord, that you be with Johnny tonight, God. I'll ask you, God, you'll touch him, Lord. Pray, God, to send the final message. God, pray it be a message from heaven tonight. Who let us hear from heaven here tonight, God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah to be to God. Aren't you glad to be washed in the blood of the Lamb? Oh, what a precious thing it is to just be washed in the blood of the Lamb. 
He said, don't glory because the devil's obey you. He said, just be glad that your name's written down in the Lamb's book of life, amen. I'm glad today that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life, amen. I love the Lord tonight. And I, I tell you, if you hear from me tonight, you've heard from very little. But if we hear from heaven tonight, like he said, oh, what a joyful noise it'll be. Oh, what a sound that'll go forth, amen. I'm ready for the Spirit to start moving in here, amen. I don't know, but something sparked a fire inside of me over the last few months over the last few weeks and I got the spirit of revival on me amen and it don't matter where I go or what I do amen I'm probably going to get a little excited amen because my name is written down in the Lamb's book of life because I am excited about what God's done for me because I am excited and I am happy that he did draw my children and save them amen I'm happy tonight that I'm saved and sanctified and filled with his Holy Spirit amen I'm so happy tonight I'm happy to be in the Lord's house. He makes a way when we thought there wasn't no way, amen. He shut the churches down. The devil come against us. He made us shut the churches down. But, oh, but God said no. He said my word will stand when the world's on fire. He said open my churches back up. Amen, it's time to get back in the church. It's time to get things back to rolling, amen. We live in the last days, in the last minutes of the last days, I've heard it said. Well, I'm telling you tonight, what I come to do is tell you, it's time to make a stand. Amen. I said it's time to make a stand. Before I get started, let me go ahead and read my scripture before I get carried away. So if you have your Bible, we'll go ahead and open up to the book of Ephesians. We'll go over to chapter 6 and we'll go on down to verse 10. And when you find your place, go ahead and stand to your feet to reverence God's word. And we'll get started. Amen. Oh, hallelujah be to thy holy Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians 6, verse 10. And it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly, to make known the mystery of the gospel, for whom I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. You may be seated. Hallelujah be to the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. He said, put on the whole armor of God. Why? So we could take a stand. I said it's time to take a stand tonight. It's time for the church to stand up and be about the Father's business. Amen. It's time for the church to stand up for what we believe in. Amen. It's time for us to quit getting run roughshod over. It's time for us to make a stand against hell. It's time for us to make a stand tonight against death. I said it's time for us to make a stand tonight against sin. Oh, we don't have to be run roughshod over. We don't have to let the devil push us around no more. Why? Because he lives inside of us. Amen. I can't I can't get over how much I can say that. He lives inside of here. He's not dead. No, sir, he's alive and well. The devil's alive and well, and he's walking around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, amen. But oh, hallelujah, one is inside of you, and he's so much stronger. He's so much more powerful. Hallelujah, and his name's Jesus. He ain't gone away. He's alive and well today, and he dwells in the hearts of the believers, amen. Oh, hallelujah, once we get a hold of that, we'll be able to make a stand. We'll be able to make a stand against the evil. We'll be able to make a stand in the last days. We'll be able to go out here and make a stand when something comes against the church, amen. We'll be able to stand up when they try and shut us down again, amen. Hallelujah. That's what my message is tonight, is to make a stand. 
How do we make a stand? We get a hold of Jesus. Amen. We put on the whole armor of God. Amen. We put on that helmet of salvation. Amen. So the devil can't get in our minds. It's so important that we put on that helmet of salvation so the devil can't come against us. Because that's where it starts most of the time. It starts right here with a thought. Oh, the devil will provoke a thought in you and he'll discourage you. Oh, hallelujah. I heard this morning. He said, don't believe. Don't believe a message from the devil. Don't let him betray you. Don't let him come against you and tell you something that's wrong and make your heart drop. Amen. That's the message I heard this morning. And this just lines up right with it. Hey Amen, I started, I started studying this out. I didn't have a message when Brother Marvin texted me this morning. I was not prepared when he messaged me. Like I said, I want to be, I want to be serious about doing God's business. So I said, yeah, I'll give her a try. I said, I'll give her a shot. And I started praying, Lord, you're going to have to give me something. Because I, I wasn't studied up like I had been studied up. Forgive me. I went and prayed up like I had been prayed up. So I started praying and I started studying and he gave me a word and he gave me a scripture and he said, tell him to put on the full armor of God. He said, tell him to put on the full armor of God. Somebody say stand. He said, tell my church to make a stand. Hallelujah, it's time to make a stand. I got to studying it out. I had almost my whole message I thought worked out and I went and opened up my, my, my little devotion. Opened it up. I ain't looked at it all day. I opened it up. It's a little Smith Wigglesworth devotional. When I opened it up for October 11th, it said, put on the full armor of God. I said, thank you, Lord, for the confirmation. I said, thank you, Lord, for letting me know that that was you that spoke to me. Amen. Amen. You can hear from heaven tonight. You can hear from heaven tomorrow. You can hear from heaven every day. You just got to have the presence of the Lord to go with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Start making a stand for him. Start making a stand against hell. Start making a stand against the devil. I come here tonight to put the devil under my feet, amen, and stand on him, amen. That's what the word said. He said stand against it. Amen. He said to withstand all the fiery darts of the devil. Amen. It's time to make a stand. It's time to come into the unity of the faith. It's time to stand together, to stand in unity. Amen. What will be bound on earth? It will be bound in heaven. Amen, you want to stand in the unity of faith? Well, to be loosed on earth, to be loosed in heaven. Amen, if we could just stand, if we could just get a hold of God, if we could get a hold of Jesus and really believe that he done what he said he did, if we really understand that he lives inside of us, we won't defile him. If we really understand that he lives on side of us, inside of us, we're going to start seeing dead raised. We're going to start seeing the blind healed. We're going to start seeing all these miracles of God. Oh, why? Because he said a greater work will you do. Because I go to the Father. Amen. Oh, I want to believe that tonight. I want to stand in all faith knowing without a shadow of a doubt that I could speak to the enemy and he has to flee that's what the word says that I could make a stand I could stand in the full armor of God oh and then he'd have to flee because he says resist the devil and he'll flee from you amen that's what the word says and I let us stand on the word and believe just believe just believe that's all we have to do that's all we have to do is just make a stand if we'll do the natural make a stand God will meet us there He'll do that supernatural, amen. He'll make that devil leave. Oh, hallelujah. He'll make all his little legions go away. Amen. Why? Because greater is he who's in me than he is who's in this world, amen. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus is the Prince of Peace, amen. Oh, hallelujah. A light shined in the darkness and it didn't comprehend it, amen. That light's Jesus tonight, amen. Oh, if you have anything dark inside of you, I want to ask you to just lay it down. Oh, that you put it away because that's where the devil works. Oh, hallelujah be to the Lamb of God. Oh, glory. I love him tonight, amen. I want to start up here. Let me just get on over here. I want to go over here. I want to try and go through putting this whole armor of God with you. I want to, I want to tell you tonight, before I get started, that Jesus, Jesus is the full armor of God. Amen. He revealed that to me as I was studying this out. 
He said, my son Jesus is the full armor of God. Amen. So it's time to put on the mind of Christ. Amen. Maybe we have to put on them sandals. Amen. And start walking. Amen. And talking like Christ did. Because Jesus is the full armor of God. And I'm going to go through that with you just in a minute. Amen. So I can try and break it down for you. So we don't have to get confused about putting on the full armor of God. Because I went through there and they're like, put this on and do this and do that. Amen. All you got to do is get a hold of Jesus. All you got to do in the morning is wake up and get a hold of Jesus. Before you do anything else, just cry out to Jesus and grab a hold of Him. Amen. Oh, and you'll have the full armor of God. Then you can go out in this evil world and make a stand. Amen. Because that's what He wants us to do. Amen. Because we do live in the last days. I believe that with, my very, with all my heart, with everything in me. He told me when I was up here one night and I was a forerunner for Christ. I said, Lord, what are you talking about? He showed me that John the Baptist was a forerunner for Christ. And he said, you're a forerunner for the second coming of the Lord. Amen. So I, I believe that with all my heart because he showed me that, that he's going to come, that we do live in the last days. And it's time to get ready and be about the Father's business because he is coming back and he's going to take his church home. Amen. If you're making a stand for Christ, you'll be going with him. Amen. I don't want to be left behind. I don't want to know that I've been told to do something and wasn't doing it when God showed up. Amen. I don't want to be laying on my deathbed wondering and scared because I got afraid to go meet my master because I, did, I didn't do something the Lord told me to do. Amen. I'm not going to turn a man down and ask me to come preach because I want to be serious about the Father's business. He said if all you got to do is go up there and tell him that Jesus loves him, that's what I'm going to do. Amen. Amen. Jesus does love you. God loves you so much. He sent his only son to die for you. Hallelujah. Verse 13 right here. Let's look at verse 13. It says, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. He says right here, he talks about standing four times in this passage that I just read to you. He says withstand right here. I want to show you what withstand means in the Greek and where they got it from out of the Greek. It says the Greek word for withstand is antihistamine. Vigorously opposing. Amen. He says to vigorously oppose. Bravely resisting. Standing face to face against an adversary. And standing your ground. Amen. He said it's time to start standing your ground. Amen. It's time to make a stand against him. He said stand face to face with it. Vigorously opposing him. Telling him where he belongs. Amen. Putting him under your feet when he comes against you. I'm telling you there's a couple of guys sitting here tonight. Amen. They're fixing to go out into a whole new world. It's time to put on the full armor of God. I didn't bring this message just for y'all, but I think it has something to do with getting you ready. Amen. To go out there and be able to put on the full armor of God so you can make a stand, so you can put the devil where he belongs, and that's under your feet. Amen. Just start speaking the word of Jesus to him. Amen. And he'll flee from you. Amen. Vigorously oppose him. You can stand face to face with him if you have the right spirit about you. Amen. He didn't say we have to stand face to face and fight. He said he'd make a way out. But this passage right here says he'll give you the power to stand. Oh, I heard the Holy Ghost give a message one night. And the interpretation was this. He said the power of the Holy Ghost will give you the power to stand. Amen. I believe that tonight. I want to have the power to stand. Amen. If you need the power to stand, I encourage you to try and get filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. If you ain't been baptized in the Spirit, amen, you need to be a seeking it. I believe that with everything in me. Amen. We may not hear about it enough. I, I don't think we hear about it enough. I know we don't hear about it enough. Oh, it's very important, amen, to get full of His Spirit. To get that seal stamped on you. Amen. It's time to get ready. You want to get baptized in the Holy Ghost, get serious about God's business. Amen. Just give it all to him. Lay it all down to him. Give everything you got to him and say, here am I, God, use me. Here am I, do with me as you see fit. Here am I, I may not be much, but all I have, I give it unto you. And you can do with me whatever you want. Amen. I encourage you to seek him. Seek his face. Amen. Ask and you shall receive. Knock and it shall open. Amen. Stand on it and believe it. Name it and claim it, amen. Start doing that in the name of Jesus. Amen. He's faithful and just to hear your cry. 
He's faithful and just to fill you with the Spirit. Amen. And He will use you if you want to be used. Glory to God. Let's move down to 14 right here. Chapter 14, or verse 14, it says, Stand. Somebody say stand. Amen. Amen. That's what we're talking about is making a stand tonight. He said, Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Amen. Stand. Jesus is the way of life and the truth. He is the way, the life, and the truth. I think that's how it's worded in the Bible. Hallelujah. Our righteousness is counted as filthy rags. Oh, but his righteousness. Oh, his righteousness in us. Hallelujah. It gives you this right here. It gives you 14 to be able to stand, having your loins girt about with the truth. Jesus is the truth. I'm trying to show you tonight that the whole arm of God is nothing more than just putting on Jesus. Amen. He said, have your loins girt about with truth. Jesus is the truth. Amen. He said, in all righteousness, Jesus is our righteousness because we have none. Ours is counted as filthy rags. We put on his righteousness. That gives us verse 14, amen. That's just putting on Jesus. Just a little more of Jesus. That's all we have to do. Move on down to 15. It says, the gospel is the good news, amen. 15, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The gospel is the good news. The good news is Jesus Christ came and died for our sins. Amen. Amen. He is the Prince of Peace. Amen. He said the gospel of peace. Hallelujah. It's all about Jesus. Amen. You want to stand up against the evil? You want to stand up against darkness? It's Jesus. He's the Prince of Peace. Amen. Hallelujah. 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Faith, without Jesus, we would have any faith. Amen. He is the hope of glory. Hallelujah. He is our faith. If it wasn't for Jesus, we wouldn't have much to have faith in. Amen. Hallelujah. He is our faith. He is everything that we hope for. Hallelujah. Be to the Holy Lamb of God. Jesus is our faith. Jesus is our faith. The hope of things not seen. The hope of glory. Faith. Hallelujah. 17. And take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The helmet of salvation. Jesus is our salvation. Amen. It said there was no other name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved. What does that mean? That means without Jesus we have no salvation. Amen. So if we put on that helmet of salvation, we put on Jesus, we take on the mind of Christ, then we can fight those fiery darts. Then we can get those those thoughts and cast them out. Amen. And we don't have to stand and be lied to. Amen. It'll give us discernment. It'll show us wisdom. It'll give us everything that we need. To stand against a lie from the devil. It'll it'll give us all we need to stand against a message from the devil. One that gives you fear. Amen. We can stand against fear today. Amen. Oh, we're running around scared to death. We're running around scared to death. It's time to make a stand and quit being scared. It's time to take and put on the helmet of salvation, which is Jesus Christ, and stand in him. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the sword of the Spirit. The sword of the Spirit. Amen. It's your offense. It's your defense. It'll cut in both ways. Amen. All you got to do is pick this up. The sword of the Spirit with that helmet of salvation. Amen. And we can go to war. Amen. I don't know if you realize it, but when he's talking through this whole thing, putting on the whole armor of God, he's talking about getting us ready to go to war. Amen. I don't know if we realize it, but there is an army rising up. Amen. I want to be part of that army tonight. Amen. I want to be ready to go. Amen. So put on the full armor of God and get ready. Amen. Take your sword. Amen. And study it and apply it and get ready to cut when you got to cut and get ready to defend when you got to defend because there's going to be people out there that don't believe like you believe. They're going to come against you. The Bible says to always be ready to give an answer of the good works that's in you. Amen. It's this right here. It's Jesus. Hallelujah. Take the sword of the Spirit and fight if you got to fight. Take the sword of the Spirit and defend if you got to defend. Defend what you believe in with the Word of God. Stand for what you believe in on the Word of God. 
Hallelujah. The sword of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The sword of the Spirit. If we could stand on Jesus. If we could stand on that chief cornerstone, fitly framed together. It's Jesus. It's this right here. This is our chief cornerstone. I don't know if we realize it, but this is Jesus. He's right here. He's right here. John 1 and 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. The Word was with God. Go on down to 14. It said the Word became flesh. Hallelujah, and He dwelt among us. Hallelujah, He's alive and well today, right here. If you'll pick Him up and apply Him to your life, He'll live inside of you. You can take this, this Word right here. Amen. I'm not telling you to worship a book. I'm telling you to worship Jesus. Hallelujah. This word will come alive to you when he moves on the inside of you. If you want to take a stand, stand on the word of God. Hallelujah. 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 I believe the word, the Lord gave me this, this message tonight to get his church ready for battle. To get these men ready for battle. To get these men ready for battle and these women ready for battle. Because we live in the evil times. We live in perilous times. We live in the last days, amen. I believe that with all my heart. They're going about just like before the flood. Going out here marrying, doing whatever, just hanging out, partying, giving in marriage. Life's going by and they don't even realize it. They don't care a bit. There's so much division. There's so much chaos. It'd take a blind man not to see it with his own eyes. It says we wrestle not with flesh and blood. That's what it says in the same passage. He said we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but with powers and principalities. Amen. How do we stand against it? We put on Jesus. Amen. It's time to start standing. It's time to get ready for battle. I don't know if you know it, but the world is coming to an end. The world as we know it will end. We are going to die, but we don't have to die. Our spirit don't have to die. This old flesh is going to go back to the ground. But our spirit, amen, if we have Jesus living in here, is going to rise. Hallelujah. Dry bones are going to be awakened. Amen. Hallelujah. We have, we have everything that he said we have. His promise is yea and amen. If there's a promise in that Bible, it's time to start standing on it. Amen. It's time for the church to rise up in the name of Jesus and start standing where we're supposed to stand. It's time to get ready for battle. It, it, it's, not, it's not a battle against, well, we've got all this political stuff going on right now. It's not a battle against Democrat and Republican. It's, it's, it's not a battle against the division right now. It's not a, divi- a, a, a battle against black and white. Or, or It's not a race battle. It's not, it's not a battle against denominations in our church. There's division in all our churches because there's so many different denominations. It's a battle that's been going on since the beginning of time. It's a battle against good and evil. Amen. Uh, uh, Playtime's over, church. I said playtime's over. It's time to get serious. Amen. You can't can't serve both of them. It's either you're for it or you're against it. Amen. That's what the word, you're either for him or you're against him. There's no gray area. It's time to get serious, amen, with what God said to do. It's time to get serious if you've got lost ones out there, if you've got loved ones out there, to let them know that Christ is coming back, amen. They may receive you, they may not. But if you'll just go plant a seed, God will give the increase, amen. That's what he said. If If it don't glorify God, it glorifies sin. It glorifies the enemy. If it ain't for him, it's against him. There's no, there's no in between. There's no gray area. There's no middle ground anymore. It's either for him or against him. And if Christ be for you, then who can stand against you? I want Christ to be on my side. Oh, hallelujah, an army's rising up. I don't know if you're ready to be in the army. I don't know if you're already in the army. Maybe you don't understand you don't understand what about what the army is. Maybe you don't know who you are in the army. I'm going to urge you tonight to, to, to come up, amen, and, and join the army if you're not already in it. Or come up and ask him where you stand in the army if you don't know where you stand. Because it's time. 
It's time to get serious, amen. It's time to make a stand, amen. Hallelujah, I love him tonight and I love each and every one of you and I don't want to glorify sin. I, want, I don't want to hurt my, my Savior's heart, amen. He lives inside of us. He dwells deep within. If Christ be in you, then there can't nothing stand against you. Amen. If he lives inside of you, then what happens when you sin? It says he is, there is, in him is no sin. If he lives in you and you sin, then what are you doing? You're putting sin on our Savior. Amen. It says, it says for a man to take hold of the plow and look back is not fit finger of the kingdom of God. Amen. If you've taken hold of the plow, it's time to get ready. It's time to get ready to take a stand because there's fixing to come a time when all you're going to be able to do is stand. Hallelujah. If you can't do nothing else, you can stand. If the enemy attacks you, Jerry, and you can't do nothing else, you can stand on that chief cornerstone. Amen. His name's Jesus. Amen. If the devil comes against you, Caleb, all you got to do is make a stand, amen. Plant that foot in the back, amen, so you can't get knocked over, amen. And tell him he has to flee, amen. It's time to make a stand in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. With Christ, we have power. With Christ, we have power over the enemy. With Christ, we have power over sin. With Christ, we have a power to stand, amen. Hallelujah. That's what I'm going to ask you to do tonight is just stand. Let's just go ahead and all stand. If you don't know the Lord tonight, there's going to be an opportunity given to you to, to come and meet him. If you don't know where you stand in the army, or if you're not even in the army, God will give you a position. Hallelujah. He loves you tonight. If, if you have a shadow of a doubt that you might not be able to stand, I ask you to come tonight and let us help you receive the power to stand. Hallelujah. If you ain't been baptized in the Holy Ghost and you want to be baptized, tonight could be your night. He said, ask and you shall receive. If you need anything from the Lord, if you just, if you just need power to move on, we can come up here and receive it. We have to give what we have unto him. I love you tonight. And I appreciate, appreciate you, Marvin, for giving me an opportunity to come speak tonight. And I'm going to turn it back over to you, brother. I believe the Lord says it's time to stand, don't you? Amen. It's time to stand. Amen. I'm going to ask you, we, we, we want to pray tonight before we leave. We, we, we believe in prayer. We want to be a praying church. Amen. He said, my house shall be a house of prayer. I believe it's one of the most important parts of the church. That's right. Right. I, I believe it's very imperative. We pray, pray, pray. I don't care if you pray enough. That's right. It's a big thing. You know, you watch those mothers, grandmothers. We saw them. I, I've seen them here over the year. been here uh, going on eight years. And uh, I've seen them in the parking lots of the church. I've seen them after I cried. And I, I wondered what was wrong with them. You know, my wife told me later, so they prayed over their grandson. Pray yeah. We've watched those grandsons, we've watched those grandchildren come in this thing. Yeah. And we've watched that happen. Those grandmothers refuse to turn loose. And so what I'm saying is, is if you've got something that's in your heart, something you've been praying about, let's come together and pray about it. Let's keep on and continue. Yeah, I believe with all of my heart that I'll demonstrate my faith in God by my continual praying to Him. Yeah. I'll demonstrate my dependence and I'll demonstrate my faith in God by my continual coming to Him yeah. in that all real prayer. Demonstrate yeah. that. Look, I can't make it without you. That's right. I can't make it. I need you. I got that's children right. that's not going to make it, Lord, unless you touch them. That's I, right. I, Lord, we, we can't make it. We need you. We need yeah, you. I think that's some of the greatest humility you can display that you can do is the place you come to that altar and just surrender as yes. Jerry's talking about he